to our today's show. My name is John and today we are talking about the consumer units. Where are you streaming from? Let me know. So glad to have you joining in and definitely if you will be watching this video on a recorded version then smash the like button and just know that you are here to get a lot of value as usual. Uh, when you are here as a top boss, you know what to expect. Of course, good things are about to happen. So today we are talking about the consumer unit and we are highlighting most of the issues that normally do happen when it comes to house wiring. This is a single phase domestic wiring or a single phase domestic insulation where Yesterday, we were covering about this meter box here. And we said that if at all there are several problems with the meter box, there are ways in which we go by to, you know, establish that indeed there is a problem here. And what we were able to say is that if there is a problem here, definitely it will go a long way in affecting the house wiring and the consumer unit. And the last question that I was uh, asking was that if at all there is power here and there is no power in the home then or in the house, then it definitely means that there is an issue with the mains wires. I asked a question and the question was if at all power is uh, out at this particular point where we have this meter, you know, there is an output here at this meter what could be the problem if at all the house does not have power supply so we agreed that indeed there should be a problem with what we refer to as the mains cable one of our top boss indeed said that the mains cable which is conducting the electricity from this point here to the consumer unit must be faulty that is why you will find that there is an output at the meter and there is no input at the consumer unit or basically there is no power in that house or in that single phase installation where are you streaming from so glad to see so many of you here so let me know where you're streaming from and if you are ready for today's session smash the like button hey which is the best meter can be used in domestic purposes that is from Felix Anyona. Felix Anyona, how are you? My good uh, friend there, my good follower. I appreciate your presence in here. Domestic wiring, uh, especially when we are talking about the meter, it really depends on a lot of things. And especially when we are talking about uh, the, you know, if, if we are talking about the rating of, or probably if it's a single phase setup or if it is you know uh, a three phase that we are talking about that meter will definitely uh you know be 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 different in terms of is it a single phase meter is it a double uh, or is it a, a three phase meter there is no double a double face or two face <laughs> so yeah i don't know are you referring to in terms of consumption power consumption are you referring to you know the, the capacity the connectivity and all that let me know but uh in essence uh the best meter that i would recommend is a meter that is flexible with you let's say we are talking about the prepaid versus postpaid you know so the prepaid is good because you know in a, in a way you have power in your hands because the moment electricity is off you are able to buy tokens and to load so that you continue enjoying the supply of electricity but let's say you are in a uh, situation where you have a postpaid and then during the day you are not at home and someone came from the utility supply and cut off the supply because you were late on payments then it will be difficult for you to get your electricity or your power back simply because you need to contact your utility provider to be able to help you yes so felix anyona is saying in a single setup 
yeah i think uh, any prepaid meter would be good for you uh there's no big issue when it comes to that again you know we are not the ones supplying these energy meters to ourselves it is the utility supply then on that which is a very good uh, question that you have asked felix is to ensure that you have a meter that is new you know that does not have a debt on it for instance in some uh countries like for instance in our country we had that program by the government the government had initiated a program whereby uh, you would be supplied with electricity regardless of the quote let's say your quote was running into thousands of shillings then you are supplied with electricity at a lower cost or at a cheaper cost and then the balance of the quotation was paid by the government of the day but you are the one to pay the debt or to clear the debt with time so that account specific account whenever there is a purchase of any electricity tokens there is a deduction that is made to be able to settle that debt now imagine someone supplied you with an electricity meter that already has a debt you know and you are not aware so you will keep on paying for someone's debt yet you are not the beneficiary so it is good to ensure that you are supplied with a new energy meter from the utility company all right so anyona i hope i've answered that just to uh keep us rolling in our today's topic we are definitely talking about the consumer unit troubleshooting if there is a problem there most likely you have an issue you know with the circuit breaker then definitely it means that there is a problem with your house wiring so what i want us to do is uh, to keep these you know this session as engaging as possible and uh, we really need to keep ourselves lively in this session so let me know where are you streaming from today we are learning about that consumer unit and i would want you to take note of it right let me just uh, try to move my camera closer so that we can really uh, grasp what is going on on that consumer unit unit already there is one circuit breaker that has tripped there or should i say i have tripped it on purpose this circuit breaker take a moment and take note of my consumer unit it is not uh <laughs> what you are probably used to because i had to do a lot of some work on it First on my list of consumer unit on the far end is what I refer to or what is referred to as an SPD, a surge protective device. A surge protective device is a device that monitors any surges, you know, any surges from the national grid. So if at all there is a surge, the surge diverter will definitely direct all of that uh, surge to the ground and that is why on that surge diverter there are three important connections the first connection is the face and the neutral of course then the other connection that is very very important there is the earth connection the earth connection ensures that all the charges or all the surge which happens uh, in the power line that is coming to your home actually is taken to the ground so see we have the live and the neutral here and then we have the earth connection below here this earth connection is again connected to the earth bars which are located um as you can see there there is a, an earth bar there and on this other end i also have an earth bar there 
you see that that is an akbar so if at all there is a problem then uh, it will simply direct the charges all the way to the ground that is the purpose of that uh, surge diverter there so if you have you have it in your home then you don't have to worry because you know what the surges that may be happening in the national grid will definitely be taken care by this uh, device here which is very very important let me just uh, pull my solar a bit here so that uh, can have some space in there. So these, at this particular point, what we have is the diverter. And then we have what we refer to as the isolator. The isolator is very, very important because like we saw yesterday, we also have another isolator at this uh, meter box. Its main purpose is to switch off power supply in case there is um, an overcurrent, basically. If there is an overcurrent, then it will cut off power supply. And once the power supply is cut off, then it means that there will be, you know, safety precaution that has been uh, taken care of there. All right. Then from there, we have a very good device here, a very good gadget that I also love so, so much. Not like that I love, but uh, it is a good device because you know of the purpose or the role that it actually plays there. And this device is referred to as an RCCB. The RCCB ensures that uh, we have, sorry, sorry for that. The RCCB ensures that there is protection when it comes to Uh, issues to do mm -hmm. just getting my my device here working I'm having some challenge I'm sorry about that We are back. Sorry about that problem. Had a technical itch on that one. So thank you so much. I can see you here, Felix Sanyona. I can see you. Thank you so much for your interacting with the content. If you're just joining in, kindly uh, feel free. We are learning about the common faults that we normally encounter at the consumer unit level. And if there is a fault at the consumer unit, then it definitely means that the circuit has a problem somewhere. So if our circuit, let's say, we, we normally start with uh, the circuit breaker, which is rated high amps or high current. For instance, if in a home you have the cooker unit or the cooker circuit, you'll have it connected to a 32 ampere circuit breaker. If you have an instant shower, you also connect it to a 32 ampere circuit breaker or MCB. And 
when we are talking about uh, a socket we'll have a socket in the kitchen that is dedicated to a 32 ampere mcb a socket in the bedroom or let's say in the sitting room or in the living room which does not of course have uh, complicated appliances connected there or high powered appliances connected there we can have it dedicated to a 20 ampere mcb then we will have other uh, circuits such as the lighting circuit a lighting circuit is definitely dedicated to either a 5 ampere a 3 ampere or even a 6 ampere depending on the load of that light circuit it could be light but it is not lighter <laughs> it could be a heavy circuit or a heavy load circuit because there are some lighting fixtures which consume a lot of power or draw a lot of current from the circuit now having different circuits in the home dedicated to diff i mean having different circuit breakers or miniature circuit breakers dedicated to different you know uh, uh circuit breakers here means that in case there is a problem with that particular circuit then the specific mcb the specific miniature circuit breaker that is serving that power line or that circuit will trip therefore saving that uh, circuit from any issues let's say we have a lighting circuit breaker that has tripped and it could be because that light uh, uh, line or that light, lighting circuit has an issue that is why that circuit breaker has tripped now let me uh, take you closer to my consumer unit So there we have it, the consumer unit over there. And um, let me just uh, give you a clear picture about it. And uh, it is so interesting for us to, you know, grasp every uh, concept here. That is my intention. Don't know whether my image is clearer. Are you able to clearly see that consumer unit there? So this is basically a consumer unit in a single phase domestic wiring. So this is our surge diverter. This is our double pole or our DPMCB. This is now what is very important in this circuit. This is our RCCB or the RCD. Ensures that it protects the circuits against an earth or a face earth leakage okay so if someone is receiving an electric shock if there is current flowing from the face all the way to the earth connection then you will have this rccb trip once it trips according to how i have wired it then supply to these mcbs which means supply to these circuit breakers will definitely be shut down okay meaning these mcbs will not receive any supply much as all of them might be on but as long as this is off let's talk about this first as long as the rccb is off then these mcbs will not have a power output because as you can see uh, the way i've wired here we have looped the face and the neutral and from this what what i have here is the incoming live and the incoming neutral from here which is a loop 
we have an output which now comes all the way down from here all the way to my main switch or my DPMCB. And then from the DPMCB, we have the output also, which goes all the way down to my RCCB. That is how I have wired it. So you, you see the neutral in coming in there, the face in coming in there. And then I have my neutral going out to loop the neutral bars here. And so on this face side here, on this, uh, the live one, I have the live connected to the bar. See this bar here? This bar, once everything is on and I've connected, remember we said that my circuit is not powered because of this lesson. If I'm powered, I've powered it on and I've accessed it here, then it might, uh, you know, uh, expose me to danger because if these parts here are live and then I get in contact with them, there is a problem there. I will be electrocuted as well as if I short circuit these parts with this case here, there is a problem because there will be sparking there. And if I make contact between my body or my fingers and between the face and this up here, there is a problem. Since we have this RCCB and or the RCD that is here, the output will go to our MCBs there. If at all there is an issue uh, with the circuit, then this RCCB will trip, meaning all of these MCBs will not be supplied with power. Is there any question regarding that connection? How is it coming along? Are you understanding everything clearly? As I have drawn it. Because again, if you do not understand it, then it means there is a problem. You will not be able to digest the entire you know, the entire setup. You need to understand the setup so that uh, it may be easier for you. If you have any question that you would want me to address, feel free so that uh, we may understand each other better, especially when it comes to the RCCB. There is a lot of questions that I have continued to receive because people are asking if at all this RCCB is supposed to be protecting us against, you know, electric shock, then how is it supposed to be wired? And I uh, think that wiring is basically visible. You can't be able to interpret the wiring here because uh, it is made so simple. If you just take this as the input of the mains, and then you have the output here where you have that neutral connecting the two neutral bars and you have the, uh, the live connecting all the MCBs, then it is easier for you to interpret that circuit. So let me just uh, get into it about the, you know, the faults, the common faults that may occur there. And so if at all you have a fault on a specific MCB, then the question becomes, how do you go about it? In fact, for you to determine or to say or to point out that indeed there is a fault on this, you know, uh, consumer unit, how will you know that indeed there is a fault here? The number one uh, indicator that indeed there is a fault is if there is any device that has tripped here. In this consumer unit, what I have here is able to trip in case there is an issue. Like I said, if there is an overcurrent or there is an overload in that circuit, regardless of the circuit, it could be lighting, 
a huge amount of current is drawn from that circuit if the mcb will not trip then these uh rccb will i mean these uh dp mcb will definitely trip because it protects a house wiring against an over current and then you have said in case someone is receiving an electric shock or there is a face or leakage of current from the face to the earth then it will definitely trip it detects that uh, issue so you really need to understand these things before you can start troubleshooting when it comes to the mcbs like i've said it really depends on the circuit let's say there is one particular mcb that has tripped here and then someone tells you that my cooker is not working or probably my socket is not working or probably my instant shower head is not working then you will ask them can you check on the consumer unit if there is any mcb that has tripped and you see for you to tell a customer that you are not instructing them to open the case because we have this case eh? we have this case that normally covers the consumer unit so all your customer needs to do is to open here like that and then once they they open sorry about that once they open that lid on the consumer unit they'll be able to tell that there is a circuit breaker that has tripped you know let's say there is a socket that is not working let's say there is a um, uh, an instant shower head is not working let's say uh, there are some lights that are not working assuming that in that setup there are several lighting circuits that were dedicated to different circuit breakers you might have as much as is a single domestic wiring you might have several lighting circuits which are dedicated to different mcbs so it doesn't mean that if at all it is a, just because it is a home, let's say as a single face installation, or we have a three bedroom or a four bedroom or a five bedroom, that you you know you you take all those uh, lighting points and you know you have one uh, wire supplying the the entire lighting points. No no no, that is not a good uh, wiring system you need to have let's say several bedrooms and dedicated to you know one mcb and then you can have one mcb dedicated to let's say a corridor and stairs okay so those are two and then you can have uh, areas such as uh, you know the kitchen the sitting room um, and uh, probably the security lights dedicated to another mcbs or you can even separate and have security lights dedicated to one mcb so that if at all one mcb in that installation fails and it was probably for lighting you don't have total darkness in the home okay so let's assume a scenario whereby someone has complained that there are lights that are not on you will ask them which ones probably the kitchen and the sitting the living room lights or the security lights are not on you will ask them kindly check on the consumer unit is there a circuit breaker that has tripped yes if yes then you as the electrician you will need to visit that home all right ian kamau good to see you wow ian kamau is back wow says Nico Dani. Ah, Yan Kamau, thank you so much. Always a great fan. I also have John Saumu. Allah, John is my namesake. Says, I am late. Can I have the full video class? Come download Mr. John. Yes. Now, uh, you, you will definitely have this uh, video as uh, uh, saved after our live stream i'm not selfish after the live stream i usually ensure that i save the video 
on our channel so that you can access it as a top goes wherever whenever you want for life if at all youtube will not uh, ban top heights electricians because this is not our platform we are just uh, hosted here so my good namesake john saumu uh, you will get it don't uh, worry that you are late you are not late i also have felix anyona in the house thank you so much if you're already finding some value out of our video smash the like button and thank you so much my top boss ian as well as john my namesake for always always supporting this content so when visiting as an electrical technician you will need this yesterday we talked about this digital multimeter we said that you need to have the digital multimeter especially when we are talking about voltages you see where already it is set it is at 754 and 50 sorry because what we anticipate are voltages at 230 also you can um, like let's say someone says they have an issue with their microwave or probably the the instant shower head is not working so and they have already confirmed that you know what uh there is a circuit breaker that has tripped now what you need to do is to first of all visit that place with your meter and then you will start with that specific appliance that was connected let's say it is an electric hooker that electric hooker is not working so you will first of all unplug it from the socket once you unplug it then you will be able to troubleshoot what could be the problem in most cases you will just take that plug let me have a plug here so if it were me i will simply take a plug see this is the top plug let's say it is a uh, and and we say that an electric cooker should not be plugged to the normal sockets. An electric cooker should be plugged to the cooker connector that is just below the cooker unit. And it is supposed to be switched by that heavy gun, which is actually a DP switch, a double pole switch, meaning it switches both the neutral and the live. And why is it connected like so? Because the cooker draws a lot of current. The electric hooker has a lot of features that draw a lot of current. You know that electric uh, plate, the hot uh, pan, uh, normally is, is, is a heater basically. It draws a lot of current. Also on the compartment whereby you are baking or you are heating, uh, where you have the hot air being uh, generated by that electric hooker, you have a heater there, you have a coil there, several of them. So that means that this is not any other plants in the home. It draws a lot of current. So assuming someone is using the, the hot plate as well as baking something or uh, grilling uh, something below there, it means that that cooker is being used at maximum uh, current. It's drawing a lot of current. So if you connect it just in the normal socket, you'll have issues with your socket as well as your top plug so we said the best way to connect an electric cooker is to definitely use the cooker unit as well as the cooker connector keep career dennis wow glad to have you say dennis says dennis nikondani from les sauce love your work sir thank you so much keep career dennis i salute you all the way from les sauce that is in kenya Mm, mm, mm. What an honor to have you, Dennis. Thank you so much. So if I were me doing that troubleshooting, first of all, I will take that plug of the cooker or if at all the customer is actually connecting to the cooker connector, I will unplug it from the cooker connector and ensure that I have switched everything off. And then I will turn my meter here. Now this one is like we are going to the uh, elect electronics class, but as, an, as a, an electrician, you must also have this. So I will direct it to the continuity test there. As you can see, continuity test. Once I have it on the con continuity test, I'll take my probes, place them on 
the live and the neutral. Once I do that, I expect if I have turned off my cooker or the customer's cooker, I expect a one because the cooker is not connected to power. But if there will be anything a reading there, it will mean there is a problem. So So there is a sound as well as there is continuity. You hear that? So with that, it will tell me that that cooker is faulty and that is why it tripped its own circuit breaker here. All right? So after doing that, I will even go further and identify why did the cooker actually develop a problem so what i may likely do is to actually also start with the socket or the cooker connector or the cooker unit i will have my probes there and then i will want to know uh, is there a short circuit between the live and the neutral now, the cooker unit and the cooker connector that I'm talking about, because I don't want to talk about something that is not, uh, cannot be able to see. Let me just demonstrate a cooker unit and a cooker connector. So that as we talk about these features, we are able to you know to understand it very well. So already I have the cooker unit. Let me just grab the cooker connector here so that we are able, we are at par when it comes to what I'm actually talking about. And uh, you'll be able to understand that indeed, if you can troubleshoot these parts well, you will not have a challenge. In fact, the troubleshooting will be very fast. Most of the times you find that the customer is uh, telling you that was so simple. Why are you charging me too much? And then you'll tell them, I'm simply charging you that because of the knowledge that I have, which you did not have earlier on. And we charge for the value that we give, do not charge for, you know, uh, just for the sake of charging. Mm -hmm. So let me know, where are you streaming from? And uh, if you are already finding some value out of these uh, today's, video let me know how is it coming along for you are you getting some value already the best way that i can know that is by you smashing you know by you smashing that uh like button and i will know that indeed you are learning So this is the cooker unit and we also have the cooker connector. So if you're doing that installation whereby you have, so this is the cooker connector and we have been talking about the cooker connector. It looks like that. 
that is the cooker connector this is the cooker unit okay So if I may just use a different one, we have, though, though they are the same, we have these as the cooker unit. Now, in most cases, you find that people have their cooker, you know, connected at this particular point here. This socket here is supposed to be dedicated to low-powered appliances in the kitchen. You know, low powered appliances in the kitchen. For instance, you can have the blender or even the electric kettle here, connected here. And uh, at this particular point, this is how the connector, the cooker unit looks from behind. So at this cooker unit, it has very interesting features, very important features, if you may ask me. We have the socket here. We have this switch. This switch actually activates this socket. And then this DP switch, this uh, heavy gun switch here, activates you know the 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 this is the in this is the out activates what goes to the cooker connector the cooker connector is connected at this particular point out and the earth is tapped here the incoming from the consumer unit is connected here so if you are connecting you know if you are connecting your cooker connector the cooker connector is definitely this one you will it is normally connected below the cooker unit so you ensure that the output from this double pole here actually goes all the way to the cooker connector right so that you have your cooker or your customer's cooker you know, connected or the electric cooker connected to the cooker connector. So from the output, from the input of this, you know, DP switch here where we have this heavy gun, you also have the supply of this socket here, this single socket here. And then from the output of this DP, the DP switch there, you now connect it. And I did a video on how to connect an electric cooker, so you can check it out on our channel, my top boss. Uh, where are you streaming from? I have John Saumu says, streaming from Kisi, Rirangia Technical College. Wow, wow. Thank you so much for uh, being here. My very good uh, namesake, John Saumu. I also have Anesu. Wachenuka, this consumer unit is it used on solar system or it's for a uh, HEP for changes? This consumer unit can uh, be used for solar or it can be used for, you know, uh, electrical, you know, general electricity connection. So you don't really have specifications when it comes to that. All right. What matters is the content. You know, what are you connecting here? How are you wiring the circuits? And, uh, you know, that is what matters most. Because for a, a solar circuit, if you have a consumer unit here, there are a lot of things to consider because there's a DC circuit there, meaning the cables that are coming from the PV, from the solar to uh the house or to charge the batteries oh 
probably you are asking that, my good friend John, because of the presence of this panel here. Oh, you know, in my workshop, I have like everything. So, uh, you know, the meter box, the consumer unit, and I'll have a lot. I think I'll need to introduce another board where I'll also have several lightings. You know, I can dedicate that board purely for DC, you know, for pure solar. So, um, so I've gone really deep in talking about that. So if you have done that troubleshooting, definitely what you need to do is... Uh, to sort out the cooker, electric cooker, if you are able to do that, you will solve the cooker problem. And then uh, after that, you will then troubleshoot if there is any issue with the socket. When it comes to, you know, any particular circuit in the home, definitely the best way or the easiest way to, you know, to resolve it is to ensure that you have your meter with you. Because if you don't have a meter with you, then you will have a lot of challenges, you know. You will have an issue. I normally say it is good to always, you see most of the electricians have a tendency to use or to visit a site for their customer with the major tools such as a tester, right? A tester, a pliers, an insulation tape. You see, you will not be able to troubleshoot or you will not be able to find a lot with this uh, type of issue. Now, let's say you are you have troubleshoot, you have already done a troubleshoot on uh, the electric cooker and you have determined that indeed the electric cooker has an issue. Then, you, before you switch things on, you will want to first of all determine if this circuit, the entire circuit, has a short circuit or is faulty. What do you do? Again, you have to use your meter, and uh, my meter is very automatic. You have it at that uh, set where you have the, you know, you have that diode indication there. So once you have that diode indication there, you can see it is a one. And then if you take your probes, like we said, again, you must be able to know how to use this uh, meter. If you take your probe and you short circuit these probes and No, it will definitely mean that there is a short circuit. So if you are uh, determining if you are, you know, you you are circuit here for this electric hooker is faulty, you simply insert the probes in uh, in the face and the neutral. I definitely know that uh, uh, that was the only problem because if you have your here and all of these switches are on and then there is no problem here, you can go ahead and switch on the consumer units. That is, I mean, you can switch on the circuit breaker that has tripped. Therefore, you can easily solve the problem when it comes to you know uh, that specific circuit so once you have done that all you need to do is to again let me have my camera closer to my consumer unit and so thankful to have uh, you streaming live here if you'll be watching this 
stream on the recorded version then i appreciate you also smash the like button if there is some value that you are definitely receiving from this today's a lesson today we are talking about troubleshooting the consumer unit and you know when we are talking about the consumer unit we are simply talking about the circuits in that home we are simply referring to all of these circuits now for me to bring this uh, closer i want us to now learn it at a deeper level you know at a more deeper level now we are now getting deeper with this thing here assuming i have these two circuit breakers that have tripped i have to ask myself these circuits here what are they serving i have a 32 and a 32 those two have tripped these ones are okay meaning the light is on some sockets are on sorry for that some sockets are on and probably there is uh, something else applied with 32 ampere which is okay but these two have tripped now do you know what you do for that case you start in reverse you start with the end eh? so what you normally have to do is to check in the house what is not working now you will start if this is a 32 ampere circuit breaker there's a high chance it is connected to high powered appliances number one the electric hooker number two it could be the instant shower head and there could be a, a heater there or probably you have a pump in that house which is connected to a certain socket it will definitely be connected to or dedicated to uh, a 32 ampere here so the main question should be what specific circuit is not working so you don't start here you start with the circuit that is not working is it the pump which is not pumping water you ask those questions at that particular time you have already visited your customer is it the pump is it the electric hooker you go and disconnect now after you have disconnected your job is not done you should not lift this circuit breaker up all right once you have unplugged let's say you have unplugged the the consumer the, i mean the electric hooker let us today use the electric hooker eh? you have unplugged the electric hooker what you need to do is uh, before you before you you know you come and switch this circuit breaker on you first of all have to again use your meter okay so you take your meter and then you come with it here see where uh, the pointer is very important very very important you have your pointer there what you expect is the continuity so with your meter you can have it there I try to have it where all of us can be able to see it clearly so you have your meter there mm. trying to get it where it is uh, possible for you to see it clearly the screen so once you have your meter there all you need to do is to take your probes these are your probes when you short circuit the probes there's that sound and there's zero zero on the screen meaning there is a short circuit and then you take your probe on this lower side where you have the output of that specific mcb you place it you place the one probe there regardless of whether it's the black or the red what we are ask, what we are looking forward to is uh, uh, the circuit if it has an issue and then you plug it on the neutral there is no problem you plug it on the earth connection there there is no problem meaning 
if for instance it was an electric cooker and you unplugged it then uh the issue was with the electric cooker you go ahead and solve it what if it is this circuit here and then you connect it to the earth connection or you connect it to let me let me just give you a demonstration mm -hmm. i think i know what to do I'll give you a very good uh, scenario that I'm used to. And by the way, uh, let me tell you, if you're an electrician, the knowledge of consumer unit will definitely take you very far because if you understand how to troubleshoot a consumer unit, then you are at advantage position. But why do I say so? Simply because um uh, yeah let us also have that one to give us a good example so if i have these three and then i have this one here that has tripped uh, let me just have them on really yeah so assuming we have already sorted the electric cooker issue and uh, we have disconnected it and we have identified the issue was with the electric cooker and we come here and we you know we raise this circuit breaker what we need to do is to now check the circuit whether it is okay once we confirm that the circuit is okay what we need to do is to actually uh power it on right we'll simply power it on and um have it back working so um am i still audible will have our circuit breaker raised and then once it is raised definitely uh, the circuit is okay can raise our breaker there but we have an issue here we have this circuit breaker that has tripped and we want to troubleshoot it what is the problem does it have a short circuit we take our meter there the probe then take this one and try it on the neutral is no issue How about here again remember you need to remember one thing eh? that uh, our neutral are both interconnected so if there is a problem and i place it there or i place it here it has to give me a signal okay my case scenario that i'm using here is kind of uh, letting me down um it's that one which i wanted so this is the the breaker which has an issue or the circuit that has a problem so i simply place my cue where i'm placing it is on the output so meaning the circuit i'm determining whether the circuit has a short so i will place it there on also on that one there we go that circuit has a sh an issue so if you go ahead and raise this circuit breaker then it will still trip there will still be a lot of sparking that will happen here because you are forcing the circuit breaker to operate under a fault so once you take your probes and mark you where we have placed the, the the indicator here you need to take note of where we have we have placed our indicator here on our meter it is taking the readings of you know continuity or the diode there so what you need to do is to connect it at the output and at the neutral so before you go ahead and raise this circuit breaker you must first of all identify where the problem is 
And if this is a pump or a socket, for instance, this is a 20 MCB, you need to know that there is, uh, it is connected to a pump, that pump is not powering on, and that is the suspect. What you need to do is to disconnect that pump, okay? Once you have disconnected it, you will, all, you will still come here, and you do the troubleshooting on the pump. If the pump is the one that has a short circuit, then that is the issue. But before you raise this MCB here or you turn it on, you must again come back and do that troubleshoot. If that there is that beep, you need to check on the entire wiring, especially at the socket. You check at the socket if there is a problem, you solve it at the socket level, and you ensure that it is are uh, very much resolved before you can raise your circuit breaker or before you can turn on your circuit breaker so you it's not just a matter of turning it on simply because you know uh it is supposed to be on you know because like i've said if you do that then there is a likelihood that there will be some fire there or some heavy sparking okay so you need to take uh, care of that so this is our circuit breaker here the mcb it is already down and we have that issue of uh, uh, the short circuit now what if you have already resolved the issue of the pump okay and you have identified that since you came and uh, did this troubleshooting here, sorry, my meter is already off, it is automatic. There is this problem here, you went to the socket and you indeed discovered that the socket had also short-circuited, because now in the socket also there could be this uh, issue, let me tell you, let me demonstrate. Assuming this is the socket that is being connected to the pump, you might be having this socket uh, the pump was drawing power from this socket, and then uh, there was there is still some problem here in the socket. So you'll have to get the socket out. Probably the wires or the cables that are connecting the uh, the neutral the, the neutral and the live have short circuited inside that switch box or that socket box, and so there is a short circuit here. So what you need to do is uh, to solve that by uh, you know uh, fixing those wires that have short circuited and once you do that then uh, you have resolved it and if the socket is not uh, you know damaged what you will need to do is to simply take your meter again you know you are not done with our meter because that is a very important thing for an electrician to have, like I said. And so in this case, if you're only having your tester, you will not uh, really have a lot of uh, help from your tester or probably from that plus or the few uh, appliance uh, tools that you have. So you still come here and take your probes and connect there. So if you are not getting a beep, then the circuit is resolved. That issue was with the socket, has been resolved. And so your circuit is okay. It is open, you know, it is open. There is no problem. So you can go ahead and turn that circuit breaker on. After turning it on, you will realize that there is no problem and you'll go ahead and uh, connect back your appliance if it was a pump or if it was the electric cooker which had a problem if you're finding value smash that like button if you will be joining these as a recorded version watching it thank you so much for selecting top heights electrical electricians to be the one that is taking you through you know uh these important session over here forgive me this is completely live so i'm doing everything alone over here and so uh bear with me
All right, all right. With time, we will definitely have a great team here, you know. Uh, so I believe that uh, you have found some value out of our today's session. And uh, that has been a great session, if you ask me, because we have, okay, can't really call engineering. Really continuous. Let me know if you're getting some value still. This session, and uh, for me, I will think I, I'm done with that. Uh, today's presentation I have taken you through, uh, you know, the most important parts. What I remain to do is to simply uh, recap what I have you know, been telling you about. So basically at the consumer unit level for you to do a very good troubleshoot is to actually ensure that you begin with the end in mind. If for instance, the customer has told you that they have that problem, what you will definitely need to do is to ensure that you ask them questions before visiting them, you know, you ask them a couple of questions before you visit your customer. So we saw that this consumer unit, because it normally has that lead, that lead is it is covered. If the, you ask your customer, please go to the consumer unit and open that lead. Do you see any circuit breaker MCB that has tripped? They might even not know what a consumer unit is. So you just guide them. That box, the electric box, it might be in the corridor or in the kitchen. Aha. Then you tell them to open the lid without any fear. Once they see something unusual, then you ask them. Once they notice that, then you are good to go. Then you go there and is it a, a lighting point that is not working? Is it a certain appliance, let's say an electric cooker, the one that we have been using as an example? Then what you need to go with, as we have said, is definitely an elect, uh, an, an, a meter, this one, you go with this meter, and you must be able to know how to do the troubleshoot. So once you start with whatever appliance that had an issue, what you need to do is to definitely uh, solve uh, that problem, you unplug the appliance, you switch off that circuit, if at all it is a lighting circuit, you switch it off and then you try to discover where could the problem be. Once you have identified where the problem is, now before you switch on that specific circuit breaker, you also do the uh, troubleshooting at the consumer unit. This, as we have seen, is done by taking what we refer to as a continuity test. You take a continuity test using this multimeter here, and we have said that you make sure that you place it at that particular point where we have a diode indication. And using your probes, you will definitely need to uh, place it at the output of the MCB, you know, where the, the wire is going out or the cable is going out to feed that particular circuit. It could be the electric cooker circuit, the pump circuit, the instant shower head circuit, depending on what circuit is having a problem. So once you place the probe at the output and the neutral or at the output of the MCB that has tripped and the earth connection and there is a problem, there will be a beep. In most cases, there will be that beep. Or, you know, once you place there, you're not supposed to get that beep or a zero, zero. You're supposed to get a one. A one meaning an open circuit. There is no short circuit in that. So that is when you will lift or put on that circuit breaker or that MCB, the miniature circuit breaker. And that will definitely mean that that circuit is okay. So you begin with the end. You begin with troubleshooting the appliance before you can come to the consumer unit and have it resolved. Another issue that can 
cause a circuit breaker to trip is if the circuit breaker is low rated or if that circuit is supposed to have a 32 MCB or a 32 ampere M circuit breaker, but what is there is a 20 ampere circuit breaker. Now, what you do also is to check on the specific appliance. If it is an electric cooker or that socket or that circuit, if it has an issue. Once you have identified that that circuit is okay, then you will come and take the readings at the consumer unit. If the readings are okay here, what you need to do, if that means there is no short circuit, you definitely know that that circuit breaker, and again, you need to have the knowledge of the circuit breaker. In my future videos, we'll talk about the sizing of the circuit breakers or the MCBs. Which size of MCB or which ampere MCB do you need to have in the consumer unit for what specific circuit? For the lighting, for the sockets, we'll talk about that in our coming videos. So make sure that you subscribe if you have not subscribed and watch out for the videos that I will be doing in regards to the same topic. So once you have identified indeed that circuit breaker is low in size or small in size all you need to do is to advise your customer to change that circuit breaker or basically to upgrade it from probably a 20 MC, uh, ampere mcb to a 32 mcb or depending on that specific circuit so that is how you go about troubleshooting your consumer unit in the house wiring to ensure that the lighting circuits, the sockets are all well taken care of by circuit breakers in the consumer unit. As an electrician, you, you must have this knowledge and you must have the main tools that you need and the right you know, instruments to be able to troubleshoot. And let me tell you something that we have already done a great course when it comes to domestic single phase wiring where we have covered all of that and I have also highlighted some of the ways that you can, you know, arm yourself as an electrician or a beginner electrician to be able to know all of these mistakes or faults and help you to make even more money in this highly competitive uh, field that you are in. So make sure to check the link on my show notes and I wish you all the best if you deserve or I mean, if of course everyone deserves, if you desire to uh, venture into this field, it is so simple with all of these tutorials that I'm giving you. And if you follow that course, we will have a lot of simple instructions which are easier to digest. And it doesn't matter which, you know, uh, career path you have taken, even if you are in the finance, you don't need to be afraid or scared of electrical you can be able to become better at it and you can use these tools and easily troubleshoot or diagnose troubles that are electrical could be in your home or if you are looking forward to do electrical engineering as a side hustle, you can become an electrician as a part-time. Once you have the knowledge of the consumer unit, you'll be able to do a lot of troubleshooting. You can fix a lot of things in a single phase domestic installation or setup. The same applies to the meter box. If you have that knowledge, you'll be able to do a lot and you'll be able to have a lot of resources in your pockets. So thank you so much for your time. That has been my time. My name is John and uh, I am so grateful to have your company here. Mm -hmm. I have my good friend here, Real Me Tech says, what is the cost of that MPPT charge controller? All right, if you're in Kenya, it ranges between 5,000 Kenyan shillings to 6,000. How many dollars are those? Yeah. We're talking about this. It's a very great char charge controller because it can take voltages up to 60 voltages from, uh, volts from the solar. And the battery, it can also control a battery setup of up to 24 volts or even... Uh, you know 48 volts and something good about it is that it is rated at 60 amperes that is the current that it can regulate us great charge controller that i have over there so thank you so much for uh, that interaction the realme tech i am so glad to have you here streaming live 
John Saumu, it was a great honor to have you. Anesu Wachenuka, mm. uh, thank you so much. And also Ian Kamau, Felix Anyona, it was a pleasure. Keep career, Dennis, thank you so much for joining in. If you will be watching this as a recorded version, smash the like button. And if you are not subscribed, subscribe to our channel for more of this content, much more to come. Thank you so much. That has been my time. My name is John and this is Top Heights Electricians. See you in the next one. Goodbye.